Hey there, my name is Jeff Fritz. I'm a senior program manager on the .NET team, and I'd like to talk to you about the .NET Framework 4.7.1 and some of the highlights of our new framework release. Today, we're gonna to talk about the new support for .NET Standard 2.0 that's built into the .NET Framework, our new configuration builders features, and some accessibility improvements that we've added to the framework. First off, we've improved the support for .NET Standard 2.0 in this version of the .NET Framework by making it in the box. That means you don't need to install additional packages in order to consume .NET Standard 2.0 libraries. To accomplish that, we added about 200 APIs to this version of the framework. And that means that you don't need to manage any binding redirects for those other assemblies. We'll generate and manage those assembly numbers for you. All right, let's take a look at a quick demo of how you can use .NET Framework with .NET Standard. I have here a simple class library that's built with .NET Standard 2.0 and this text manager class with two methods that allow me to manipulate a collection of strings. Inside of each one of these, I take advantage of the new append method that's available on the iEnumerable collections. This method wasn't available in .NET Framework 4.7 and earlier. I can reference this library from a .NET Framework project, and I can manage a collection of strings and take advantage of the new append feature and the .NET standard reference so that it just works. Additionally, when we look at my project, you can see .NET standard is a direct reference and not a package reference that we have to go and fetch and manage from a third-party source. Let's run my project, and I get my collection of words. I can reference that same library and from a program that's written in .NET Core, I can run and get the same experience. So .NET Standard allows me to reuse these features whether I'm using .NET Framework, .NET Core, or Xamarin. All right, now let's take a look at a new feature in .NET Framework 471 called Configuration Builders. This is a feature that allows you to inject configuration into your application before it starts. We have a simple abstract API that you can use to write capabilities and acquire features and configuration from a third party source. So we inject and update your configuration that you would normally access using the configuration manager class, meaning that you don't have to change any other code in your application in order to read and consume that configuration from an external source. This means that you can write a configuration builder in order to consume configuration inside of a container that's being orchestrated. Let's take a look at a quick demo that shows how we can inject configuration from environment variables and continue to read them using the configuration manager. I have here an ASP.NET 4.7.1 website running and I'm just writing out some of the app settings that I have in my configuration file. I've written a setting in there called computer name, and it's outputting the value my web server. And you'll see here inside of my page, I just have a simple for loop iterating over those app settings and writing out their values. My web config contains that one app setting along with the value specified. We can overwrite this setting without changing any of the code inside of our application using config builders. By adding a section that we see here on lines five through 12, I can begin to reference configuration builders and manipulate the contents of my configuration. I've built a environment configuration builder that I reference here on line 16 and 17 but you could build one and reference it from an external package or library as well. My environment configuration builder is a class that inherits from the configuration builder abstract class, gets the environment variables from our machine here on line 21, and inside our process raw XML method, you'll see that we iterate over those environment variables. And if an environment variable's key 
matches one of the keys in our app settings, we'll overwrite it. Let's activate our environment variable configuration builder for our app settings. We do that by adding a config builders attribute and specify the name of the config builder from line 16. I'll save, restart our application, and now it shows the computer name that's registered as an environment variable on this machine. This makes it much more easier to orchestrate containers and enable a lift and shift scenario because you can inject configuration from environment variables, Docker secrets, or other third-party sources. Let's review some of the accessibility improvements in this version of the .NET framework. We've improved high contrast support for Windows Forms, especially on menu items where there are checkboxes and disabled items, it's significantly easier to view those items on the high contrast display. We've also improved the display of disabled text. Narrator support has been significantly improved throughout Windows Forms. And finally, we've done some tweaks to WPF to improve support for screen readers and high contrast displays. So what I'd like you to do is go out and install the .NET Framework 471 Developer Pack. After you have that installed, check out some of these new features and follow up with us on our blogs. That's blogs.msdn.microsoft.com slash .NET and slash webdev. I encourage you to revisit Connect on Channel 9 so you can watch other videos about what we've announced at Connect and continue your education at Microsoft Virtual Academy Online. Thanks so much for watching.